Hey cousins, welcome back to the channel. It's your girl Chrissy Pips. And in today's video, we review part two of chapter four of our book. Um, now in this video, we get into how marriage, occupation, savings, environment, and dominating thought can be used to get people to drift. And we'll review some other examples of drifting and even review a full description of how to identify a drifter and non-drifter. But as always, if you're here, you're interested, so let's get into it. The revolution will be live. Now, this is where things get good, and this is part of the reason why I felt like this chapter needed two parts, okay? So this part helped me to identify some of the habits that we all have that need to be broken and knowing is half the battle, right? Let's start out with how bad eating habits and undisciplined diet can lead to drifting. Sounds funny, right? But when you think about it, craving sugar, salt, and how people overeat and how diets are so unbalanced these days, it makes sense, right? Being healthier closes one of the doors that negativity uses to creep into your mind and affect your thoughts. After all, the things you think about most are the things that tend to happen, right? So if you're worried about your health, because you don't have good eating habits, you're just holding a door open to let negativity in. As far as your health is concerned, negativity takes its form of like fear, worry. The last time I checked, people don't worry a little bit. Now remember, health, wealth, and happiness all go hand in hand. Now, how about marriage? It can be used against us and our best interests too. The devil says he causes people to drift into marriage without a plan or purpose for converting that relationship into some sort of harmony. He does this by making a couple fight over household finances, how to raise their children, what friends they have, and even intimacy in their relationships. In turn, the married couple becomes so consumed by the negative aspects of their relationship that could be fixed if they just stop and talk it through. That they're not focused on making the relationship better and moving forward towards a singular purpose as a unit. Now, moving on to occupation. You were told the same thing I was. Get good grades, go to college, get a good job. And some people skip the second part altogether. Not saying that's a bad thing if you know what your aim in life is and college won't get you there. But jumping into the first job you feel can make you a living is exactly his plan. He wants you to remain under fear of poverty. So opposed to enrichment and growth in your life, you stay in the same line of work, just living to pay bills, never really making any real achievements in your life because he knows how much potential you really have and if you just put your mind to it what you can achieve but guess who doesn't want you to think accurately about how to better yourself and other people's lives yep that guy now how about saving money not a chance he wants you to spend as much as possible and save as little as possible so that you remain under the control of fear and poverty. Then he doubles up by using occupation again against you. Now that you've spent all of your money, you have to go back to work, right? And don't have time to figure out what it is that you really want to do so that you can continue to go to your job and pay bills right the bills that you create right now environment and we're not just talking about the outdoor part here people he causes people to find themselves in unpleasant environments at home at work around friends and family he claims to be the very reason why people remain in these unpleasant environments 
He even goes so far as to claim control of your dominating thoughts. That little seed of negativity that's seemingly hard to shake, yep, that's him. Causing negative thoughts that turn into negative acts that affect the environment around the negative people since they have a negative effect on the environment surrounding them. Well, misery loves company, right? The book goes on to explain how a dictatorship is a devilish device. There's mention of Hitler, Mussolini, and Stalin. If you're not sure who these three guys are, please take a look at Google. They're just crazy dictators who ruled way before you were born, and you should be absolutely happy that you weren't born during that time. But moving on. Drifting, laziness, procrastination are all parts of the root cause of failure in most people, if not all people's lives who are not successful. Definiteness of purpose and discipline are a good remedy. See the videos in the First Mindset Monday series for more information and help. I'll put the link in a little card right here. The devil goes on to say drifters are like putty in his hands because drifting destroys the power of individual initiative and poverty is contagious. The people who are immune to poverty are those who know what they want in life and have the willpower and drive to move towards that. You know how they say the meek will inherit the earth? Well, not really, most of them are drifters. Wealthy people aren't all that bad when you understand how they gain their wealth, if how they gain their wealth is through hard work, dedication, and other ethical means. But I think money got a bad name when they started saying money was the root of all evil. In the right hands, it can do a lot of great things. After all, people who think for themselves are unable to be controlled by the devil. Now, let's get into the description of a drifter. They lack a major purpose in life. They lack self-confidence. They lack any great accomplishments because they require thought and effort. They spend more than they earn, and credit helps with that one. They lack imagination. They suffer from hypochondria of bad health, or bad health, or even both. They lack enthusiasm. They lack control over their emotions and temper. They lack magnetism or other people are not attracted to them, like drawn towards them. Their opinions have no factual basis. They're considered to be a jack of all trades, which means at the end of the day, they're a master of none. They are non-cooperative. They somehow refuse to learn lessons and continue to make the same mistakes. They are narrow-minded and intolerant. They tend to get into arguments with people they don't agree with. They have high expectations for the people around them, but refuse to put in any work of their own. They start projects, but never finish them. They will have opinions on problems, but never have solutions. They never actually make decisions and if they do they change their mind quickly or contradict their last decision they don't work out enough and eat too much they overindulge in alcohol and especially overindulge when it's free drifters gamble they criticize people who see success because they found out what their major purpose in life is even though the drifter has no idea what they're meant to do. A drifter will tell a lie instead of admitting ignorance on a subject. They will smile in your face and talk behind your back. Drifters work harder to avoid work than the workers work at making a good living. Do you want to know what non-drifters characteristics are? Sure. Non-drifters have learned the art of definiteness of purpose. They're always working on some well-organized plan with a definite outcome in sight. 
They have a major life goal that they're always working on and have an outline of any minor goals that are on that same path. Their tone of voice, the pep in their step, the twinkle in their eyes, their quick ability to make a decision, all let you know that this is a person that knows what they want and are determined to get it no matter how long it takes and no matter what obstacles pop up in their way. There's a list for non-drifters too, and I'll drop both lists in the comments below. But here we go. They have a mind of their own and use it for all purposes. When you ask a non-drifter a question, they give you a direct answer. They don't evade the question. If they don't know the answer, they let you know up front. They will be at the head of the pack no matter if it's a game or a war. They have a good memory. They aren't filled with alibis and excuses. They don't blame others for their mistakes, even when other people deserve it. They have a go-getter personality with a go-giver mentality. Giving is in their nature. They are inspirational to everyone that they meet. You will see them running a successful business, living a successful life. The major difference between drifters and non-drifters is just the decisions that they make. Non-drifters are clearly the ones making better decisions and choices. If a drifter wants to make a turn for the better in their life, they only need to change their choices. I'm definitely glad I was able to go into more detail for you guys, but that's going to end today's video. So let me know in the comments below if these two lists help you identify something inside of you that you want to change or keep doing. As always, I hope you guys are having an awesome and productive day, and I'll see you in the next video.